So when you're solving for eigenvalues, you're always solving a quadratic equation. You could have two distinct real eigenvalues. You could have two. Uh, yeah, you could have a repeated real eigenvalue. Right. You could have a repeated real eigenvalue. Um, you could have two complex. Too complex, like a plus or minus bi, like that. What else could you have? Imaginary, or is complex? Uh, you could have purely imaginary. Yep. So you could have two pure imaginary, like plus or minus bi, okay. and then yeah, zero. You could have so how's the scoring one you get Bang. Um, oh. So you, if you get three of four, then you get your, then you get your score. So the maximum is still four points. You just had an extra opportunity to get one of your points. Okay, so just a quick look at our schedule here. Four on three, five. We've got test two coming up. I mean, not immediately, but in a, in a couple of weeks. Who knows? Um, April 11th, test wow. two, which is on chapters three and four. Day after my birthday. Uh, um, and we have a take home quiz coming up between now and then. So just sort of keep those in the back of your mind. Yeah. So given that we're nearly done with chapter three, you um, could could be nearly completed with the second portion of your final project. <clears throat> All right, so let's talk about repeated eigenvalues and zero eigenvalues today. When you're solving a quadratic equation, you have three possibilities. You could have two distinct real I, uh, solutions, like the blue parabola here. We have two x-intercepts. You could have a single repeated zero, like the red parabola, or you could have no real solutions, in which case you would have two complex solutions. So the case of the single repeated zero forms the boundary between having two distinct real zeros and two complex real zeros. Think of this as transformations, right? As you move this parabola up, there's a bifurcation that happens, right? Where you go from two uh, real zeros to one to none. All right, so the case of a single repeated eigenvalue forms the boundary between systems that behave like those that have two distinct real eigenvalues, which could be a saddle, a sink, or a source. Right? And those that behave like systems that have two complex eigenvalues, which are spirals or centers. So it's sort of somehow in between those two types of system. So let's look at an example. Um, I want to compute the eigenvalues for y prime, which is uh, matrix A times y. So first, let's just translate this just to keep us in the habit of remembering that this means x prime, y prime, equals negative 2, 1, 0, negative 2 times x, y. Or you can write it as two separate systems if you want. x prime is negative 2x plus y. y prime is 0x minus 2y. All right, so eigenvalues. We want to solve the equation the determinant of a minus lambda i equals zero. Did that already? Okay, well let's do it out. So a, my a is my matrix negative two, one, zero, negative two. I have to do a minus lambda i. So this ends up being negative two minus lambda. One, zero, negative two minus lambda. Take the determinant of that, set it equal to zero. So the determinant of a matrix is AD minus BC. So this becomes 
negative 2 minus lambda times negative 2 minus lambda minus 0, right, because the 0 times 1, set that equal to 0, and then you end up with lambda equals negative 2 is your only solution. So we call that a repeated eigenvalue. Okay, so in um, in our work in section 3.3, three, we relied on straight line solutions, right? And straight line solutions were based on the lambda value and the associated eigenvector. And once you had two straight line solutions, you could add them, take a linear combination and you get the, the general solution. So the problem here is that we only have one straight line solution. Um, but let's find it anyway. So I need to find the eigenvector associated with lambda equals negative 2. So we need to solve a v equals lambda v. And v is my eigenvector. It's x first, then y, right? xy. Yes, xy, yeah. So this is negative 2, 1, 0, negative 2. <coughs> so there's my a. V is my unknown eigenvector, xy. Lambda, I now know, is negative 2. Now, I have two equations with two unknowns here. Either the two equations will, will be redundant and give you the exact same information, or it'll be one of your equations gives you no information at all. So you don't always need to write them both down, but sometimes Sometimes it's helpful. So I have negative 2x plus y equals negative 2x is one of my equations. And then my other equation says negative 2y equals negative 2y. Okay. So negative 2y equals negative 2y is a completely unhelpful equation. It tells me absolutely nothing. Right? So I can just ignore that. Right? It doesn't help me. And then if I solve this one, add 2x to both sides, and I get y equals 0. So give me an eigenvector. A0 or 1, 0. Yeah, anything 0 would be an associated eigenvector. So in my phase portrait, the eigenvector points in the direction of my straight line solution. And my straight line solution, in terms of an analytic solution, would be y equals e to the lambda tv, right? And in this case, I would have e to the negative 2t times 1, 0, straight line solution. So that is one particular solution. It's not the general solution to my system. It's one particular solution. And I can plot it in the phase plane by using the eigenvector 1, 0. So here's my um, vector field. If I want to make a phase plane, um, you can see the straight line solution along the x-axis, 1, 0. They're all pointing in towards the origin. So there's my straight line solution. I can tell from the vector field that they're pointing in. How else would I know that they're pointing in if I hadn't created a computer-generated vector field? Because the eigenvalue is negative. Because lambda was negative. Yeah, perfect. All right, so there's my one straight line solution. And then I could, I could try to follow some of the, my other solution curves here, um, like I did in the, in the picture at the right, right? Just pick some random. Um, initial values, and it looks like everything comes into the origin. Yeah, it kind of looks like it's spiraling, but, but it can't quite like actually go around the origin. Because of the straight line solution. Because of the straight line solution, yeah. So just like we said, this, this is the boundary between a sink and a spiral sink, right? Because by... Um, when you have two real eigenvalues, this would have been a sink. 
no non-real eigenvalues, if they were just uh, imaginary, we would have had a spiral sink. This is the boundary. So it's like trying to spiral, but that single straight line solution kind of stops it. There seems to be two straight line solutions, though. Where's the other one? Um, looks like uh, if you start at y is equal to negative 1 and y, x is equal to negative 3 right there. In your picture, you can see it right there. It goes, it goes through the origin. Well, we can say that a straight line. I mean, it's sloped. I think that kind of goes like that. Uh, as you go along the x, the, the arrows start. I think it's the closer you get to the x-axis, the flatter they're going to look. Yeah. yeah. So is a straight line just it doesn't have a slope to it is what I'm asking because there's a, you know, it looks like there's a, a line that has a slope to it that goes through the origin. Am I crazy? Maybe. I don't know what, like... All the lines. Never mind, Jimmy, or... A straight line doesn't have to be flat. It can have, it has, they can have a slope. Come drive. Where's your, where are you, what it's, are you looking at? No, it's, it's already been drawn, that's all. It seems to me like, I don't know, maybe it's because of the graph or something, but this line right here... Oh. That has that has a curve, just has a little curve to it. You just can't see it very well. Sorry, it's okay. No, um, if we zoomed in on it, you would see that there's a, it has a little curve. So, I had to do a linear combination of those solutions, or right? Yeah. So I only have one solution. I only have one analytic solution. So I can't take a linear combination to get the general solution. But we can analyze qualitatively, right, using the phase portrait. Um, so I, I could sketch what x of t and y of t look like, x and y, right, based on the phase plane for a given initial condition. So if, if my initial condition is 1, 2, so that would be x is 1, y is 2. So here's my initial condition. Follow the arrows. What happens to the curve? Spirals into the yeah, it spirals into the origin. So I want to analyze x and y separately here. So x starts at 1. So x is starting at 1. And looking at this little blue curve I've traced, what's happening to x, to the x values as you, as you walk along this line? It they just go right to 0, right? They're just always getting smaller. Okay, so x just goes... Whoop, down to zero. Okay, and then let's do uh, y. Okay, if you start here and walk along that curve, what's happening to your y values? They just go right to zero. We're starting right here. Yeah. Same same dot as before. Yeah. <laughs> and the y and we're only looking at the y values now. They just head right to zero. There's no oscillating or anything. So that started at 2, and they also just head right to 0. Do we have to determine the rate? You know, no, like, this is purely qualitative. Does it have a reach All we can say is that um, it goes to 0. Does, does, does it start start? No, 0 is at, it's asymptotic. OK, so what we have not done in the demo is, is find the general solution. Right, for, for this system that had a repeated eigenvalue. So number one in your activities is walking you through finding a general solution for the repeated eigenvalue system. Question. Yes. Are we going to be yes. reusing the uh, um, guess and check method? The lucky guess? Um, I don't remember. I think there might be a lucky guess in there, yeah. I think that's what the reading yep. is now. Yep. Um, but I walked you through it. Like, I think I told you what to guess. Yeah. Um, so that's what you're first going to do. And then the other special case that we have not talked about today is when you get zero as an eigenvalue. So that's, that's after number one, you're going to work through some activities that deal with having zero as one of your eigenvalues.